So John, back in Iceland with a massive camp. How's the camp been here so far? Uh, yeah, so far so good. We have um, a diverse range of sparring partners and body types. So it's, uh, everything's going really well. So what's the biggest benefit to take like a big team over here for two weeks, you know, just before a fight? What's the biggest benefit for you as a coach? Um, well, I think for, specifically for Gunny, uh, he has fantastic facilities here, great strength and conditioning coach, excellent coaches, but doesn't get maybe as many people for sparring as, as some other teams would. So that was the number one thinking was that when we're over here, we just get a lot of rounds in. So we have a huge number of uh, welterweights, middleweights, um, and just to make sure he gets a a different look, diff different guys who move different ways, a lot of rounds in these two in this two week period, and then he can kind of taper a little bit off the sparring and, and focus on just going into the fight as healthy as possible. But yeah, d people moving in different ways. Definitely. And uh, but what, what's the biggest benefit for your fighters who are uh, going abroad from Ireland and stay here for a couple of weeks? Yeah, so we, we have a big uh, show, Bellator Dublin, in February 23rd, so for them it was almost the end of the training camp, but again, same, same kind of concept that they were going to come somewhere, well I guess for them, you know, they're coming somewhere fresh and new and you look around and it gives you a bit of a lift, they're near the sort of tail end of their training camp, which is when people started getting sore and a little bit tired of the training, but you come to especially a beautiful facility like this, it gives you a rush of endorphins, a rush of energy. Um, so I think for them, it was just for a breath of fresh air. And in Iceland, there's no fresher air. Uh, you have many fighters who are fighting in Bellator right now. Uh, how big of a deal is the new like Sky Sports broadcasting deal for your fighters and, and their expo exposure? Well, I think it's arguably the biggest TV deal in MMA history for Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, Sky Sports is huge in the UK and Ireland. Um, there is no show, there is no regular European show now with a TV deal. Uh, UFC is, is a little bit haphazard, and when they come, Bellator are really making a commitment to coming six or eight times this year um, for shows around Europe. So, if you're a UK or Irish-based fighter and you want to fight in front of packed arenas with millions watching at home, which is obviously a big help for sponsorship deals and stuff like that, Bellator is, is your home. It's, it's really that simple. And uh, Gunnar Nelson has a fight against Leon Edwards now in, in London in uh, six weeks' time or something like that. Uh, how do you see that fight uh, stylistically? Um, Leon is, uh, I think, the, almost the number one thing I take away from Leon is he's very confident. He's never been submitted. He's fought 19 or 20 times. I think only three losses. Um, never finished on the ground. He's very... Um, yeah, he's very calm in all positions, not, not, a, not a huge amount of mistakes. He's southpaw, a little bit different to get used to the closing distance on. Um, so it's, it's, it's going to be intriguing. You've got somebody with um, a very measured approach. He, he doesn't make too many, he's not wild. And then, of course, Gunny is um, very explosive get, at getting into that clinch. Um, but there's going to be, it's an interesting style clash up on, even on the feet. You know, who knows, it could be more, more kickboxing than, than grappling. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's going to be one, uh, I think it's going to possibly be fight of the night, you know, because of how they match up. Mm -hmm. uh, Leon Nettis has been talking a bit about that until and, and the winners of those couple of fights on the main card, uh, Coleman and main event, will face off in the future. Do you think he's maybe a bit overlooking Gunnar? Um, Maybe a little bit, but in saying that, you know, it was just an interview, and I'm sure when the interview was over, he, he kind of went back to being focused on, on the contest in hand. Um, he just at that press conference, Gunny wasn't there. There was Till was there, and, and uh, so I, I can kind of understand how that did come up. Um, I did tweet about, you know, be careful not to overlook, but I'm, I'm sure he's not. I'm sure as soon as the as soon as he went back to the gym, he was back uh, focused about Gunny. Um, so I don't think it's going to play a major part. Mm -hmm. And looking at the welterweight division, you have obviously Tyron Woodley facing uh, Kamar Usman in Mars, and then Colby Covington is on the sidelines, and then we have Ben Askren in the mix if he gets a win over Rob Lawler. Where do you see Gunnar uh, in the title picture if he gets a win against Leon Edwards? So when this kind of, when this, it's almost like a mini tournament was set up, I figured, I sort of half saw that this one would be uh, Gunny beats Leon, 
Darren Beats. Um, Jorge Masvidal. Yes, Masvidal. Sorry, <laughs> went down my head for a moment. Those two winners will fight in the summer. Gunny and Darren. Uh, maybe a big show in Liverpool. And then, uh, towards the end of the year, Gunny is fighting for the belt. I think November this year, Gunny fights for the belt. I, I don't know why. It's so strong on my head, but that's what I think is going to happen. And I can't see it being anybody else other than Tyrone. He is, uh, he's proven to be able to beat everybody so far. And he has a, a very intelligent way of fighting, applying his skill set to beat whoever he's facing. Whether it's another wrestler-based guy or a big, strong striker like Darren, he's been able to beat them all. Um, so yeah, I think uh, two good wins and then, and then Gunny versus uh, Mr. Woodley at the end of the year. You're a busy man, John. You're over there in Ireland, and Gunny is most of his time here in Iceland training. How do you manage to uh, keep in contact with, with Gunny and his training when uh, you're in two different countries? Yeah, I think we're coming up to 15 years being uh, together now. And the first, the kind of formative first seven or eight years, we're around each other a lot. A lot of the foundational work, uh, I think, is done in those first, uh, that kind of first decade of training. So. We don't be around as much each other as much anymore, but our time together is very, I think, effective. And even just with having some back and forwards on, on WhatsApp or you know some videos back and forward, we can actually get quite a bit done. But he's got such a good momentum behind him now, such a good skill set. Uh, it's kind of a, I imagine, like your first couple of years training is like getting a very heavy wheel moving. But once you get it moving, it has a lot of inertia, and you just have to kind of keep it going. So that's, I think, what we've been able to do. Um, this trip here, I think, has been very helpful in, in me being able to bring a lot of different body types that he's, he hasn't seen before, he hasn't sparred with, just to kind of keep that razor sharpness. But um, I think his focus now is maintain the skills that he has. Of course, we're always looking to improve, but he is, I believe, the, the most skillful uh, welterweight in the UFC. And it's great to see the likes of Unar now coming in, the really high-level strength and conditioning coach, to, give, um, to make sure the gas tank is there so he can go hard for three rounds or five rounds. What sorts of improvements have you seen from Gunnar in the last mm, couple of years? Um, well, in the last fight, I, I think, um, and in the last six months or so, maybe even close to a year, it's just he kind of spent his first 10 years training, I think, focusing on skill improvement, mm. which is fantastic. That's how it should be. So most of his time is spent just getting very, very skillful in striking and grappling. Now, I think his focus is on, okay, make sure to maintain that, but get this in, uh, incredible delivery system. And that's what I've seen as being the major change is that, um, I remember like I, in his last fight, I had tie pads and he threw one kick and I had an immediate headache because I'd it was the power that he put behind it. So his ability to generate power now and maintain that power for three rounds or five rounds, I think that's gonna be the difference between him getting being in that top five and, and, and title contention. The skills are there, now it's, now it's getting that engine. Mm -hmm. And finally, uh, Conor McGregor has been pretty vocal on Twitter talking about fighting in Brazil, fighting against maybe Andrew Silva and uh, complimenting Jose Alto and all sorts of matchups being talked about. Out of uh, Andrew Silva, Jose Alto, Don Cerrone, <laughs> what matchups does interest you the most? You know what, it's the, at this stage, it's the matchup that interests Conor most. Mm -hmm. um, He's got, he's, he has the world at his feet. He's not fighting for any other reason now other than that. It's, it's fun to him, which I think is the best reason. Um, so it's got to be the matchup that gets him up in the morning. Thank you for the time.